just playing around with a few slides and uh, testing out a few gadgets. So I will run through a few of these slides. Um, if you want to uh, watch and play along a little bit, that's great. Um, you can see I've got my little picture in picture thing up here running. I think that works, right? Um, okay, so section one, we're gonna talk a little bit about electricity basics. We're going to do definitions of volts, amps, ohms, and watts. Talk a little bit about voltage drops and do a few wattage calculations. Oops, I've already goofed up. Uh, not me, right? I never make mistakes. Here we go. Now I think I've got it. Okay, so um, voltage uh, you'll see is symbolically shown as the letter E for equipotential, potential, I believe, is the electrical pressure pushing electrons along a wire. Now I'm going to try a little something here. Yes, I have the ability to do a little thing floating around on the screen. Um, I can also do that as a, um, a magnifier, or I can also do that as a little magic green laser pointer. So voltage is the electrical pressure pushing electrons along a wire. Ampers, uh, typically shown as a letter I for intensity, is the amount of electrons flowing in a circuit. Ohms, typically shown for, as the letter R, is the resistance to current flow in a circuit. And watts, normally shown as letter P for power, is the power made or used in a circuit. So what is this volts thing? Well, you can kind of think of it as electrical pressure. Um, I like to think of it as like pounds of pressure in a tire or PSI in a water main or whatever. Um, and in fact, in water, we, in all of these things, we, we measure it in pounds per square inch PSI. Um, and so you can see down on the bottom here, um, if we had a, um, uh, a 10 PSI, or in this case, a 10 volt thing, there would be rather low pressure and water flowing out of it would not flow very far. If we have a much higher voltage or pressure, um, in this case, we would have the water flowing out much further. Um, so basically, low voltage systems don't want to push power or amperage down a wire, very, a very long wire, whereas high voltage systems or high pressure systems can push it indeed down a much longer wire. So higher voltage is the same exactly as higher pressure. So again, what you end up with is equal pressures try to produce no current flow. So if you happen to have two tanks that are hooked up together with a pipe and they have exactly the same amount of water in them, you can imagine that the water does not want to flow between them. It'll just sit there. However, if you happen to have uh, a tank on the left, which has a higher amount of water than the tank on the right, it will try to equalize. You get this flow and that's exactly how electrical circuits work. Current and whether it's water, you know, in drops of water or, you know, amperes of current, uh, electrical current will try to flow from the higher potential side here over to the lower potential side. Always, all, always does this at all electrical circuits. And again, this is this birds on a power line thing. Now, they won't be electrocuted if they land on any kind of a single high voltage wire. And, and people say, well, it's because they're not grounded. Well, that's sort of right, but not exactly. So if you go look at this, this bird has got both feet on exactly the same wire because both feet are at exactly the same voltage and it could be 1,000 volts, 10,000 volts, 100,000 volts. There's no flow between them. It's just like the water pressure is exactly the same. And because it's exactly the same like that, what we end up with is, well, they don't get electrocuted. Oh, what's going on? I broke something. Told you I'm, I'm messing around here tonight. There we go. So current is the flow of electrons in a circuit. So it's just really like the flow of water. So if we have a turbine here on the left side, and this turbine is basically spinning and creating 120 pounds of pressure on the lower side of it. 
and zero PSI coming up. If, if we cap off both ends and we measure it, what we're going to see is a 120 PSI difference, or what we're going to say is a 120 volt difference. And larger wires just lead to more, more current. So if we look on the left side here, we can see a small hole on the bottom um, lets a little water flow and get some work done. Just like if you have a small hole in a, in a tank, you can only get so much water out. Whereas over on the right here, if we have a larger hole in the bottom, it's going to let much more water flow out of it, or in our case, much more amperage. Now, what's stopping all of this is what we call resistance. So resistance is well, it's equal to ohms, it's measured by ohms, and it's the opposition to current. So, and basically a few things come to mind here. So the thickness of a conductor is defined as its gauge, with the lower gauge being thicker with less resistance. So if you have a 10 gauge wire, it's going to be much thicker than a 14 or 20 gauge wire, and it will be able to carry more more um, current with less voltage drop. Doubling the length of the co conductor or extension cord will double its ohms and voltage drop under load. And basically what that means, if, if you have a, um, uh, a 50 foot extension cord that's, that's not really big, and let's say that it's dropping five volts, it's dropping you from 120 to 115 volts. If you double that, if you double that 50 to 100 foot instead of being a five volt drop, it will be a 10 volt drop. Um, so what you will end up with is instead of starting with 120, now you get 110. So shorter extension cords are better. Heavier extension cords are better. Um, and again, that's part of our next part here. The lower the resistance of the wire, the more current it can carry with less voltage drop. And as you guys all know, you don't start off with a whole lot of extra voltage in most cases. So you do what you can to keep it as high as possible in, in your RV. So making a, a wire carry more current than it's rated for will cause overheating and a fire. In fact, I've, I've done a number of videos uh, where I've taken a, um, a, uh, a, con a 14 gauge, 16 gauge extension cord that might have been rated for um, 12 or 15 amperes and I lit it up with 30 amps and um, within five minutes it was over 190 degrees and, and a couple more minutes it was approaching the boiling point of water. It wouldn't have taken much more than that to um, actually let it catch on fire. And you can see each of these conductors um, the thickness of them changes the amount of current that they're rated to carry. So the things that we're going to normally see are something like a, uh, a 10 gauge, 10 gauge, or excuse me, a 16 gauge wire. And you would have to protect that with a, uh, a 10 amp breaker or fuse. You're going to normally see a 14 gauge wire in many cases in your RV, and that will be um, rated for 15 amps. If you want to put a 20 amp breaker, then you need, you can see a thicker wire, uh, 12 gauge. Uh, if you have a, um, whoops, well, that's neat. If you have a um, 10 gauge, if a 10 gauge wire can in fact carry uh, 30 amperes of current. And if you're going to be um, doing 50 amps of current uh, off of a short power cord, then you're going to see you're going to need at least six gauge wire. It's just, the nature of the beast. It just gets heavy. It just does. Um, one of the things you want to do f to be careful about all of this is something we call a, um, the RV industry calls a hot skin voltage. Everybody else kind of calls it a contact voltage. Uh, if you're around high voltage power lines, it's dropped on the ground. We call it a step voltage. So basically it's this difference in voltage. So you can see um, if this doorknob is around 100 volts and our poor little guy is standing on wet ground he can become the current path uh the key to, to, to remember is you do not want to get your body in between a 120 volt ac circuit and anything grounded it could be wet ground it could be another rv a whole variety of things um that's because your human body has somewhere around 1500 ohms resistance give or take 
changes up and down dependent on you know the salinity of your sweat i guess um and you know how damp the ground is but uh, or, or whether you're whatever you're making contact with but it's somewhere around that um and only uh 10 milliamps of fault current through your body can be in fact dangerous to your heart uh 20 milliamps is enough that you can't let go of an enger energized wire and i've actually experienced that um you know where you're um you grab onto something and your hand just clamps and you cannot let go it's the most terrifying thing um that's because you have more muscles in your hand to clamp together than to open up um, and so once you get about 20 milliamps of current going through you all of your muscles clench up so these guys went out over this one and you can't let go no matter how no matter how strong you are you can't let go um, 30 milliamps of current um, can actually put your heart into fibrillation within seconds so this 30 milliamps this uh, fibrillation thing is when your heart instead of going boom 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 like you would hope that it's doing right now it just kind of sits there and goes um, and of course what they have to do is put you on a defibrillator or an AED an automatic uh, external defibrillator that basically hits pushes the reset button on the computer you know your little the little clock in your heart and go click click and back up we go um, and that's why it doesn't take very much at all you got to be careful with this thing um, also another thing to remember is resistance plus current is what causes voltage drop so let's go back to our pump example here and if we notice on the left side i've got my pump or a generator or whatever we want to call it and let's say it's still it's making 120 psi or let's say 120 volts and if we have a load connected down on this side of it you can see we get a 10 psi or a 10 volt drop so what happens on the one side we have a 10 volt drop and on the return neutral up here the white one you can see we have another 10 psi drop and so consequently guess what it adds up to um 110 on the one side and 10 on the other side and opposite polarity opposite um thing creates now you end up with 100 psi here or 100 volts so if you have a long enough wire um you can easily drop your voltage down whoops there we go it's kind of neat i don't like it like that um you can drop that down to 100 psi very or 100 volts very easily which is really down below what any of your appliances are really happy running with now wattage is dependent upon voltage and resistance so basically if you have a um if you have a high resistance connection here that is this tiny little tube um, you will not be able to get a lot of water going through here and a lot of current going through this thing. And so consequently, you can't get a lot of power. Um, a big fat tube here allows you to have much more water flow. Uh, so you e it equals larger, larger wattage. So if you have a tank with no flow, it can just sit there all day, all year, forever. Uh, just like the pressure in uh, your tire um, of a car, vehicle, whatever there's no work being done that 30 or 50 or 125 pounds of pressure or whatever just sits in there with nothing to do until you punch a hole in it and then it starts coming out and when it starts coming out it starts making electricity uh, starts making power uh, ohm's law let's say i'm going to step up skip over that for right now da, 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 watts equals work uh we're going to skip over for that right now charge your calculations Okay, part two next issue okay so this is actually not a bad place to take a little break let me see if i can figure out how to shut all this down again i'm mike Sokol. this is just a, a little test run uh if 